Welcome to AQMD On The Air. I'm your host, Alan Caldwell. Joining me today is the Executive Director for the Center for Community Action and Environmental Justice, Ms. Penny Newman. Ms. Newman, thank you for joining me. It's my pleasure. Can you talk a little bit about the history of your organization, as well as your goal and priorities as it relates to public health and cleaning the air? Well, the Center for Community Action and Environmental Justice started 32 years ago with the goal of developing leadership in our community so that the people most directly affected by issues can participate actively in finding the solution to those issues. Um, we focus a lot on training and helping people develop skills so that they can interact with officials and make sure that the solutions that are put forward actually meet the needs of the community. And how long has your organization been in existence? More than 32 years. We started with uh, the Stringfellow Acid Pits, uh, California's top priority Superfund site, um, a long time ago. Been at it for a while. A while. <laughs> <laughs> I know that in San Bernardino, the rail yards, the locomotives are a big issue. If you would, can you talk a little bit about how you're working with AQMD and also what do you see in the future as we deal with the issues related to locomotives and the rail yards? Well, the rail yards and locomotives are, uh, pose a real health threat to communities because of the emissions of their diesel, or their really dirty diesel. And they're one of the few uh, industries that is, is truly not regulated as far as their emissions go. So that it's, it's a real high priority. And as they've expanded, they've had a bigger impact on the surrounding community. The rail yards operate on a 24-7 basis spewing out things. We know that the closer you are to a rail yard the, or a diesel source, the greater the health impact. And the health risk assessment has demonstrated in San Bernardino that there's more than 240,000 San Bernardino residents who live in an excessive cancer risk. That cannot be tolerated. We have to step forward. So in the past, we've worked with AQMD on trying to pass legislation on doing rules, on trying to come up with some way of, of addressing this major uh, source of pollution. And the railroads have stopped us uh, in our tracks just about every time we've tried it. Um, we know that they have the, the financial resources. There's the technology available to improve the situation. They simply do not want to do it. In fact, we've had railroad representatives tell us that unless there is a profit in it for them, they won't do it. So that has left us with a, a real quandary of, you know, where do we go forward if we don't have agencies at the state level willing to take them on to put in regulations to address this and the railroads aren't willing to do it uh, voluntarily, then where do we go? So I think it leads us to um, requiring, uh, you know, really pushing our federal um, uh, representatives to step forward and start addressing this. Well, I know when you talk about the railroads and the locomotives, it's only a piece of the puzzle. When you really look at the, the goods moving and transportation, you also have to think about the highways and byways and all those diesel trucks that are moving product. Right. I know that proximity matters. And if you would, can you talk a little bit about you know, how people are impacted that live close to these highways and freeways and also you know, how your group is working to address those issues so that we maybe can alleviate some of the impact on these mm -hmm. neighborhoods. Well, you know, uh, we first started working on what has come to be called goods movement, the movement of goods and products from the ports through our communities and nationwide, um, through the warehouses that appeared in Mariloma and the huge amount of these big buildings. At first we thought, well, they're just big buildings, but with them come thousands of diesel spewing trucks. And so we, we started doing a lot of research and gathering the studies that have been done mm -hmm. uh, on, on our health related to diesel exposure. Um, one of them found that children in Mariloma have the slowest lung growth and weakest lung capacity due to the particulate pollution uh, spewing from diesel trucks in all of Southern California. Um, so we, we started looking at if there is, uh, the health risk is determined by how close you are to the source, it makes sense to have buffer zones. Yeah. And I think that that comes down to planning. And so our local elected officials, the city councils, 
uh, county supervisors are the ones who really have to understand what the science is telling us and the devastating effect that exposure to diesel has. And, and so that they make decisions that at least build in a right. buffer zone. I mean, we're not saying don't build. Exactly. We're saying be careful where you build right. because if you put homes next to freeways, um, you're going to raise the health risk of people. We know it's related to asthma. We know it's related to cardiovascular and other respiratory diseases, as well as birth defects. So a simple measure is making sure that buffer zones are built into the, to the planning criteria. I know that you work with AQMD on a myriad of issues, but you talk about the local planners, the local elected officials. Do you also work closely with them to try to get those buffer zones implemented as part of the planning process? Yes, um, but you know they've come to see it as uh, they've been recommendations so far from the Air Resources Board from AQMD, and so they're seen as arbitrary. You don't really have to do them. So I think it's important that we put that into regulations. We know it works. We know that it would protect people. So it needs to be built in. Um, I think the other other piece that I'm really excited about is AQMD's Clean Communities Plan, because what it's proposing is you identify those really hot spots, those areas that have heavy pollution, and you bring agencies together in a coordinated manner in order to solve those solutions. And that brings in the local elected officials too, so that they can better understand exactly what is at stake here. Um, and San Bernardino is one of the communities selected, and we're really excited about that. It certainly needs the assistance. And uh, in San Bernardino, we also have a multi-agency task force, our, our San Bernardino uh, in EJ task force, that has brought together EPA, the Attorney General's Office, uh, Cal EPA, um, CARB, all of these agencies, along with Mayor Morris, who, who hosts the task force. Uh, and this is a perfect match for it. Uh, it. It brings some resources together so that we can really begin to identify, understand the mechanism of exposure, right. and then take measures to solve that, that problem. I know one of the core principles of AQMD's Clean Communities Plan is addressing specific issues in specific neighborhoods. Can you talk a little bit about how specifically your organization has been involved in the process as we move forward to implementing this new program? Well, you know, again, one of the important pieces is to have the, the local residents at the table. And so, you know, a lot of people, especially when you have an, a language uh, difference, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> are not comfortable coming to the table to talk with the mayor or, you know, someone <laughs> that they see as right, exactly. a real authority. And so we do a lot of training with them to begin to be comfortable with that, to make sure they understand the issues okay. going in and understand the language that's being used, what is particulate pollution, all of that, so that they're comfortable bringing their ideas to the table. These people know this issue better right. than anybody. They just need uh, a little help in being able to explain their understanding right. of it in an arena they're not comfortable in. And so I, I really see this uh, Clean Communities Plan as an excellent way of being able to gather all of the players who play an important role in this to find the solutions and really comprehensive solutions. Well, I know you're a huge advocate for the community and dealing with environmental justice issues. If I'm a resident of San Bernardino or Riverside County, uh, is there a phone number or a website where they can get more information about your organization and where they can get involved? Oh, absolutely. We have a website at ccaej.org. Okay. And we have our phone number is 951-360-8451. And there's someone there, a person to talk to any time that you call. Right. And so it, it's, it's really a people's institute right. is what CCAEJ okay. is. It's designed just to help residents gain the power that they have within their own neighborhoods. It's building community. And uh, we find that once people start seeing themselves in a community with right. common interests and they're willing to take a, their responsibility in that, they can change the world. Well, Ms. Newman, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Um, I commend you for your commitment to environmental justice and addressing these very important public health issues. Again, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, Alan. And that's our show for today. Thank you for watching AQMD on the air and helping us clean the air that we breathe. Let's work together.
Let's work together.